What's up? So I finished the first part of Gravity's Rainbow. It's almost 200 pages in. And oh my. <laughs> oh my pizza pie. That's a hard book to read. And you know, I'm used to like James Joyce. Um, but the fact that there is something going on in, inside this weird kind of stream of consciousness narration throughout, it's hard, it's hard to, you know, it's a hard pill to swallow. So I have a couple of books assisting me with the reading of Gravity's Rainbow. Not to mention, you know, Pinchon Wiki, um, which is nice. I have the Gravity's Rainbow Companion. I also have this awesome book um, called Pictures Showing Every Page of Gravity's Rainbow. It's really interesting by Zach Smith. And it's literally, literally a picture for every page. It's so cool. Makes it a little more um, enjoyable to read as well. Um, Pinchon, I mean, I got the book years ago, but... I got more into a Ulysses, um, James Joyce phase at the time. Now I need something, you know, different. Um, and that's obviously one of the top 100 books of all time, let alone top 10 most difficult books. And since you only live once, why not give it a shot? I'm also uh, still in the middle of Infinite Jest, halfway through that. I started that years ago, but I've had I'm on a huge hiatus from that. After I finish Gravity's Rainbow, I'll probably pick that one up again and finish that. Um, I mean, I just like weird books, you know. The, there's another book called The Recognitions by William Goddess, wrote, written in the 30s. Um, and that's also considered a, you know, super postmodern fiction type of experience, so i got to hit that up. There's also A Man Without Qualities by Robert Musil. Got those two volumes, going to hit that up. I'm just tired of all these cookie cutter brad thor you know uh just all the same crap you know i, I need something that'll stand the test of time not be on you know the monthly top 10 new york time bestsellers um and uh patterson oh my god this james patterson books he just shits him out like stop with that you know create something of meaning you know a purpose that'll survive in the next couple hundred years you know because it's not like it's not like we got anything else in store for us. It's like the end times, if you didn't know. Uh, but anyway, I've been really super fascinated with New Orleans again right now. Um, I'm reading um, a couple short stories about the French Quarter. I'm watching, re-watching Treme, a great HBO show. It just literally puts me in New Orleans. I've been reading a lot about the Louisiana history and the purchase, of course. Um and the development of the Creole and Cajun dialects in that uh, area, and all the different races that intermingled, you know, at the bottom of the Mississippi. And it's really, really, really fascinating. Um, I really want to go back to New Orleans. I lived there for almost two years. Now I'm just in, you know, central East Texas, just, you know, having a job and doing, doing the boring life thing. Um, but when I was in the quarter, you know, it was just, it's, it's, it's a party all the time. But then again, I was in college. Um, I went to Loyola, but I did not graduate. I dropped out. I hate college, hate school, hate education, um, because it's not about education at all. Even though I was a classical guitar major, so it wasn't really about book smarts anyway. Um, anyway, I've been studying a lot about New Orleans because I've been trying to write lately. You know, I'm just tired of talking to, to a camera, creating memes on Instagram. It's a nice way to get stuff out there. Um, but I need something a little more challenging, you know, I'm in my 30s now, it's not a game anymore, if I want to get serious, you know, with the, with the big boys, st we're standing on the shoulders of giants, and all y'all are taught to read is fucking Harry Potter and Fifty Shades of Grey, like, there's a whole world out there of something with deep meaning, and it's not just about being hard, it's about being extremely creative in a way that tests you, and, and makes you you know, break the barriers down of what you thought a novel or a book or an idea or a philosophy could be. I'm trying to make a book. I don't want to spoil anything, but I want to write a fictional book um, that's sort of based in New Orleans, but goes along like with kind of like Alice in Wonderland. You know how James Joyce Ulysses is basically Ulysses, um, but in Dublin, set in the 20s. Um, actually the teens I want to set my book in New Orleans but based off of Alice in Wonderland but still incorporating all the stuff that I've learned throughout you know my life um, and I figure it's a perfect place to kind of 
blend the cultures and belief systems that I, you know, am interested in. Yeah, New Orleans has voodoo, but it's not all about voodoo. No one knows very much at all about voodoo. Uh, but that's also where we get the idea of zombies from. Um, so that's, that's just another thing I might incorporate into it. Like, I already have one little published book of essays. Um, you can go on lulu.com, L-U-L-U. -L -U. I'll put the link in the description. I mean, those are my philosophical texts, you know. Um, one of them's basically about Nietzsche. The other one's about everything. And the other one's about um, a dialogue between Nietzsche and Oscar Wilde. And then the other one is strictly about Nietzsche being the Antichrist. Um, because five different religions said that the Messiah would be born the exact year he was born. And he's, you know, the... He created the Ubermensch, and you know he wanted a reevaluation of values. No one born in 1844 was having any kind of messianic destiny except Nietzsche. And screw the Baha'i twins; they're a bunch of nothing. They give no truth. Um, so anyway, that's my beliefs, you know. And uh, I already have those printed. You can get it for 13 bucks um, in a hard copy, or you can get the the digital edition as well. I forget how much it is. I think like four bucks, five bucks. But yeah, I'm trying to get into fiction, y'all. So that's why there's there's a famous phrase that's um if you got to know if you want to make a classic, you got to know what to beat. Okay? And it's like all these fucking rookies just start writing without having any you know, prior experience as to what's already been out there. Oh, I want to write the real the old American novel. How many how do you know it already isn't written? Some people consider Underworld by Don DeLillo. American novel, then the Gravity's Rainbow, then Infinite Jest. Um, you know, you have to, you have to uh, know what to beat in order to beat it, basically. Um, and I might not act like a thirty-year-old, but I've always thought like an old person. I've always been into the meaning of life when my friends are just playing video games. You know, I've always had a deeper inclination because if you know that's. It's just who I am, um, but it also has to do with the planetary alignments affecting my birth and everyone else's birth, not to mention reincarnation. So, I mean, there's just a whole lot of things that I, I, I know, and it's just like I have an encyclopedic knowledge of things I find interesting, just like James Joyce had an encyclopedic knowledge about Dublin and Ireland. And guess what? He's an Aquarius like me, so we, we retain information uh, better and easier than others. Mo better, okay? Um, and the way Pinchon puts in a bunch of physics in uh, Gravity's Rainbow, you know? You just need to put in something that people have to not know about. You have to have um, footnotes on the most interesting books, in my opinion. And you're not going to understand the most interesting books without footnotes. Yeah, you could say you read something, but that's, that's, that's only the first step, you know? <laughs> I mean, and understanding is the second step. Uh, basically, I just want to tell you I'm having like a, a creative, um, you know, shift. I figured I've, I've found out a lot of my own truths that are going to be, you know, uh, a solid foundation for something that could be expressed more creatively, um, you know, through the, fi the, the medium of fiction. Hopefully, it won't be a disaster, but I've already have a lot of notes. I've watched a lot of documentaries. I need to buy some more books about the history of New Orleans and everything and voodoo and everything I want to throw into that puppy because as you know I mean time's almost up I mean I'm not I'm not doing this because I'm bored I'm doing this because I think time's almost up and I want to prove myself to myself because I mean I don't have to prove anything to y'all I just have to prove it to God and to myself you know but that's personal opinion either way just letting y'all know the train of thought um, I'm having these days um, but if y'all are ever bored, I'm on Live Me sometimes, um, yelling like a fool. I have a totally different energy on Live Me because I'm like drinking and having fun basically and listening to music and jamming out and playing guitar. Like Live Me is a totally different, um, different kind of me that you can see. And I have hours of fucking hours of footage already up there. So just go on Live Me and my, it's the same as my screen name, Godalist, but with the number one behind it because I had to delete the first account. Probably because of firearms that I was showing, so I'm not showing my guns and anything anymore because we're living a pussified, offended-ass generation. But either way, in, in any which case, um, yeah, just a bunch of a bunch of fiction right now because truth is overwhelming and I can't turn on the TV without seeing motherfucking Trump's face and it's killing me. I need to escape from this shit. So that's why we created fiction. Take it easy.